Harden Skills managed to top 16 the most recent Modern Challenge. This was a high stakes event with over 250 players, meaning the deck has to be good to do this well. Today we'll be trying out the deck as I really like how it utilizes all the classic Harden Sales cards, as well as new additions from recent sets. Patchwork Automaton is really good in this deck. On its own, it grows after every spell you cast, also with Ward 2. This means that on the play, turn 2 you can cast it without needing to worry about removal, especially cards like Renin 6. Power Depot and Zabaz are also great additions to help give extra protection when going for kills with Arcbound Ravager to play around Burn. They are also just great value cards to have in the deck, as the more synergy that we have, the better the deck performs. Zabaz is a great threat to fetch from Urza's Saga and also adds additional counters to module triggers which is much needed in the deck. Apart from these cards, the deck looks like a classic hardened scales list, so as always if you like this type of content then please like and subscribe and check out Mana Traders with my promo code for 10% off. Our first match, we start on the play and have to mulligan a slow opening 7 and keep a nice 6 bottoming the uncastable Ancient Stirrings. Now we can leave with our Ink Moth and Zabaz. Our opponent doesn't like Zabaz so they fetch a Bloodstained Mire and use a Lightning Bolt. We follow up with Power Depot and say go. Using another fetch, they get a basic mountain, cast a Renin 6 and plus on the fetch. We top deck a Basilisk Collar which is great with Walking Ballista but overall on the deck I'm not sure is better than Shadow Spear. But we play that, play our Hangerback Walker and our Welding Jar, and pass it back. Our opponent starts their turn by pinging the Hangerback, we protect it with the Welding Jar, they play their land, play a Ramp Spell, and ship the turn back. Top decking the Forest here, I'm going to put a counter on the Hangerback Walker, as well as make a Construct Token to try and build a bigger board. This can all be done at instant speed, so I ship it back. They fetch a Dwarven Mine on my end step, play a Farseek, play their fetch land from the graveyard, we make a token, put a counter on, and we top deck Arcbound Ravager. Now as this is the first time I'm playing Hardened Scales, this may be a mistake, but I decide to go for the kill. My logic is this, they are clearly playing a deck like Scapeshift, they're going to be playing cards like Primeval Titan, loads of Valakuts, ways to find Valakuts. So my logic is, is that I'm most likely not going to get another turn after this, they've already used one Lightning Bolt, and they decided to not bolt the hanger back when they pinged it with Renin 6 on the earlier turn. I tanked about this for a long time so it wasn't an easy decision and I decided to go for it. Urza's Saga was a great help because we managed to find Zabaz as well as Power Depot adding an extra modular trigger onto the stack and Zabaz making an extra counter was a big deal. I loaded up the Hangerback Walker, made a load of Thopter tokens, sacked the Arcman Ravager, do they have the bolt? A very funny troll that almost got me by the opponent, but luckily we deal 10 infect damage to them and win the game. Would you have gone for the kill here? Please let me know in the comment section down below because I don't know if it was correct. Going into boarding though, I want the Tamiyo safe keeping as extra protection for my creatures against their bolts and other removal spells, and I take out the slow stuff. Tamiyo safekeeping can also protect Urza's Saga from artifact destruction. Anyways, going into game 2, on the draw we have a very nice double patchwork automaton hand with double Zabaz. We top deck a power depot, so we leave with that, and our opponent just plays their land and says go. As they don't have Renin 6, and we top deck an Urza Saga, we can now play the Saga, play Patchwork Automaton, and they can't remove it because of Ward 2. They still use their mana on a Beseju on the Saga, which is completely fine, and they just land go. We get our Ink Moth down, and another Patchwork Automaton, which they swiftly bolt the other one in response, and we land the Zabaz. You can see here how fast you can build a board with Patchwork Automaton as they follow up with the Huntmaster of the Fells. Now, we top deck an Ozolith, which is a very powerful spell. Now I'm thinking in my mind, why would my opponent keep such a slow hand with only a Bolt and a Beseju? And the clear answer is this, they definitely have Force of Vigor in hand, so I'm going to attempt to play around it. I'm just kidding, I'm a hardened scale noob, so I just cast everything in my hand. Not only that, but I missequence the Zabaz as I cast the Ozlith after the Zabaz. Round of applause for me, please. Now, they did nothing on their turn. They flipped their Huntmaster and tried to deal 2 damage to the Arcbound Ravager. What I do is grow my creatures so that I can target the Ink Moth Nexus to be pumped by the Ozlith to hopefully be a lethal attack attempting to play around Lightning Bolt. But don't forget, they can have Force of Vigor. The Ozolith pump goes through on the Ink Moth Nexus, we attack, sacrifice the Zabaz so that we can pump the Ink Moth, and they Lightning Bolt the Arcbound Ravager. Now if they have Force of Vigor, I instantly lose the game.
yeah, I don't know. I'm not a hardened skills expert. Maybe I was meant to play this game differently and play around Force of Vigor, but it's very hard to play perfect with this deck. Next round, on the play, turn one hardened skills. Can't really argue against that, especially with backup from Urza's Saga and Throne of Geth. We leave with Forest Harden Scales, they just play a fetch land and pass it back. We top deck an amazing Patchwork Automaton, which works very nicely with Harden Scales. So let's Saga, Patchwork Automaton, they fetch an Overgrown Tomb, and play a Wall of Roots. As it's clearly Yogmoth, I want to make big bodies to be able to bash in. I decide to just play Springleaf Drum and go for activating Urza Saga so that I can have multiple big bodies to attack with. Again, thanks to Ward 2, they untap, play a Grist the Hunger Tide, but can only plus to make a 1-1, one, one, and we make a token on their end step in our main phase, and fetch a Pithy Needle naming Yogmoth as we can attack the Grist the Hunger Tide. I play another Zabaz to pump our Patchwork Automaton, and play our land on red in case we need to activate it. Both of our creatures go at Grist, they decide not to block, they untap, play a Young Wolf, play another Grist, and make a creature. And they ship the turn back. Top decking Urza Saga is a great draw, because not only is that a threat on the next turn, we also have access to white mana, so we can use Throne of Geth, and the activated ability from Zabaz to give it flying to kill the Grist, as well as to pump the Patchwork Automaton, and to just add general pressure. I also decide to besage you the Nurturing Peatland to limit their card draw. They chum block with the Young Wolf, their Grist dies, they untap, play a Birds of Paradise, as well as a Blood Artist, and you can see where this game is going. We top deck another Patchwork Automaton, we play that, bash in with everything, they make a few blocks, they gain a couple life, and they besage you the Pithy Needle on our end step to try and top deck a Yogmoth. However, that plan fails, they find a Grist, they plus, and then they concede the game. Going into boarding, we want all the dismembers in, the welding jars aren't good against minus one minus one counters, as well as the animation module is very slow against the deck with ground blockers. Now for hardened skill experts, you're not going to like this next game because I don't think I play it very well. Our opponent starts off with an ignoble hierarch and I decide to dismember it on turn 1. My opponent then follows up with a wall of roots and instead of casting patchwork automaton, I just play the hardened scales. Now they do miss their third land drop, play a grist, plus it, and say go. Top decking a land, we now go for a patchwork automaton, playing it alongside the ozolith, and the opponent plays another ignoble hierarch, plays a Strangle Root Geist, pluses and passes. Now, with a load of value on the board, I decide to try and attempt some form of lethal. I play my Arcbound Ravager, sack the Patchwork Automaton, but in response, they force a Vigor, the Arcbound Ravager, and the Ozolith. A very, very weird timing. Why wouldn't you just force a Vigor the Ink Moth? I don't know, but let's continue. I load up all the counters onto the Ink Moth Nexus, bash in for 6 and present lethal for the next turn. The opponent untaps, casts a Yogmoth, makes a token, attacks, and ships it back. Now this is where I punt massively. What we can do is use Throne of Geth to attempt to protect the Inkmoth Nexus from all the minus one minus one counters. However, I massively punt when using Throne of Geth because I forgot that not only can you proliferate your opponent's things, but you can proliferate infect counters on the opponent's face. A mistake that I should have noticed and I've learned for the future now, as I haven't played with proliferate commonly before this. Anyways, because of this mistake, they survive at 9 infect, they untap, they do Yogmoth things, and I concede. In game 3, I mulligan to 6, and my opponent snap kept 7, so I didn't want to go to 5, and kept a risky hand, which ultimately did not pay off, and I lost the match. It was very unfortunate. In the last round, we had a very fortunate top deck Arcbound Ravager in the first game to present lethal, allowing us to use Walking Ballista to ping the opponent's face. For the next game, we had a really cool win because their opponent sandbagged their wooded foothills to fetch a dwarven mine to chump, but they completely forgot that Urza Saga can fetch Pithy Needle, so I was able to steal a win. As always, if you did enjoy this video and forgive the punts that I made, then please like and subscribe and let me know in the comment section down below what I should play next. However, check out this video because YouTube thinks you'll like it.